Yep, every time I expect the recording to break, it doesn't. Don't know why that is. Anyways, what's up, Internet? It's your dumbass, Panicos Gaming. And we got a pretty quick shiny hunt today, I think. Um, so there's a new wild area event. Oh, uh, and it has the fossil Pokemon from uh, Gen 5 and Gen 6. Uh, I would not be able to name them all off the top of my head. I think like Aurorus, uh, Tirtuga, and there's one more. The, um, the parrot thing, the like rock parrot that is really not good. Anyways, so the one that we're looking for is Tarantrum because that's the only one that can be shiny. So we got this den, which is nice. So it's already what we want. Hopefully, or was this actually uh, glowing when I came over? No, okay, I did throw one in, okay. I was like talking and not actually paying attention to what I was doing. All right, so we're just gonna get to hunting it. Fortunately, it's not like a milsery where I have to sit here for like a while catching ones that I don't care about or that aren't shiny. I did care about those other milsery. Uh, but I believe there's a, in five star raids, there's a 25% chance of each of the Pokemon. Um, so yeah, Tarantrum and then the other three each have a 25 um, in five stars and then again, you know, three, four, and five are all available. Um, actually, the lower ones are available too if you haven't been in the game yet. Um, yeah, Tarantrum has a... There's a 2% chance that Tarantrum will be shiny. But that's... That's 2% of Tarantrum's uh, 25%. So basically, if you get a uh, five-star tarantrum, then there's about a 10%-ish. Not quite, actually. Uh, actually, pretty close. It's somewhere. It's in the ballpark. About 10% chance of that thing being shiny. Basically. So yeah, 2% of all five-star raids will be a shiny tarantrum, which is. Well, it's a wild area event. I, I feel like that's better than normal. But I feel like the last couple of these events haven't been normal, so... Because I think, what, it was like Eevee and then was Milsery the next one? It might have been, honestly. I can look it up, uh... Actually, I guess I can look it up right now. So yeah, we have the fossil event, the Pokemon Day event, which had no shinies in it, which sucked. Uh, let's see. February 20. Okay, yeah. Then the Milsery event was before that. New Year's. Oh, right. So yeah, there was a Magikarp for the New Year's event, but I already had shiny Magikarp, so I didn't do that. And then, oh, Delibird. Okay. Actually, yeah, Delibird was even better than this. Anyways, I should probably close this and actually play the damn game. Even though I'm not really doing much playing. Yeah, I think before the Delibird event, it was probably the Eevee event. Because that was right when... um. The Gen 4 remakes came out. I really gotta wonder, now that we, like, have all of the features for Gen 4, or, I guess maybe I shouldn't say all the features, but, like, we at least got the, um, the Wonder Trades. When are they gonna activate the home compatibility? Because, God, it would be nice to be able to actually do anything with that game again. I mean, I could, well, I was going to say I could read, but, like, there's not really any point. This is going to be full odds. I'm not going to go and hunt down a 
a uh, Japanese Ditto online or some shit. I was waiting until home compatibility is added. But yeah, then I can work on Fion and Shaman and Arceus and Darkrai and Kyogre. Oh, and before that, I need to still finish Registeel. I'll probably start the Fion if it if the um. If the event is, or if the, um, Pokemon home support is added soon, then I'll probably shiny hunt for that Fion. Probably right off the bat, honestly. And I can, like, work on that while also working on Registeel a little bit. I was considering, like, maybe doing, like, maybe 50 Registeel events, or... Encounters, rather. Um, oh, there's the growth, or not crow, the uh, parrot thing. But yeah, I was considering doing a bunch of those after this tonight, but I think it's going to be too late to do that. So I'm not going to worry about it. Sorry, getting a drink. There we go. Doesn't mean it'll be shiny, but I mean, a 10% chance of it being shiny is pretty good. Uh, pretty sure not. The one I'm looking for is very blue. Alright, so we'll just load back in and start resetting again. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about the, um, having so many, like, ridiculous hunts to do in, a uh, BDSB. Because, I mean, that Shaman, Arceus, Darkrai, and Kyogre are all going to be full odds hunts. And, I guess it's possible, but extremely unlikely, that, uh... We could see, like, Deoxys or something else added to. I wish they would, but I don't think it's very likely that we'll get any more uh, events in that game. I need to change it over to April. I usually don't bother with changing the, um, the month, but I think today I will. Just because I know it's going to be pretty quick anyways, or hopefully this will be pretty quick. I'm kind of expecting it to take about an hour. So it did take me 10 minutes just to get my first uh, Tarantrum to, 5-star Tarantrum, rather, to show up. So, I don't know. We'll see. I really don't want this to take multiple days. This is not a hunt that should take multiple days. Milsuri only took a while because it was, um... I was just having to encounter everything that was 5-star. And also, especially early on, I was, uh... Only... I was actually, like, battling and catching everything, instead of just, like, resetting. Yeah, I'm going to have to come up with a game plan of what Pokemon I want to hunt in which games. Because, I mean, just here, right, we got 
three titles that I want to shiny hunt in. And then when Gen 9 comes out, we'll have four. I could also still do some hunts in a uh, Let's Go Eevee, but uh, that's not going to happen. I've thought about maybe hunting for Ditto in that. Oh, that's a big maybe. But, I don't know. Problem is, Ditto takes so fucking... It's, like, not a very common spawn anywhere in that game. In theory, it's in, um... It's in Cerulean Cave. And it's in... The, uh, basement of the Pokemon Mansion, but... It's not very common in either of those. In fact, in the mansion, it might actually be the special spawn. Which is kind of a problem, because it doesn't... It doesn't really get boosted how much it spawns, if it's like the special spawn, I think. But the lure does make it a lot more common, but, you know, it's... I don't know, we'll see. Did I actually, like, start the invite thing? Oh, I did. Cool. I feel like we've seen the same Pokemon in a row three times now. Make that four. It's probably not, but... Uh, yeah, other than Ditto, I don't think I'm ever going back to the Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee. I would absolutely play the fuck out of a new one. I just have no reason to go back to that. Or basically no reason. Again, there is, um... There is Ditto. But, like, in theory, I can hunt for that in Sword and Shield as well. And... I still need to do some more, uh, Ditto hunts in Shield someday. Hopefully now that we're gonna have, like, a nice gap where there's no new games coming out. Or no new Pokemon games anyways. I can, like, actually make some progress. Alright, here we go. What's it gonna be? Will it be shiny? Am I gonna get very lucky? No. I really can't complain about bad luck in these hunts anymore, because... Right before I started streaming... Like, not as in today, but just, like, in general... Uh, in... September? Maybe August, September? I forget. There was a, uh... There's one of these events for Chandler, and there's one for, uh, Cinchino. <laughs> or however you... How, how are you supposed to pronounce that damn thing? Um... And obviously, like this, you know, they also had other spawns in them, but those were the two shinies. And on both of those, first try with a 5-star Chandler and first try with a 5-star uh, Sensino. Uh, both of those were shiny on the first try. I was just like, oh, shit. So yeah, I can never I can never really complain about uh, these hunts taking a little while. Oh, god damn it. I just realized something. Hold on. I'm... I'm not smart. Okay, now that we're in the correct game category. That was a nice waste of 15 minutes. Uh, let's change the date. I think that's where I was at with this. Actually, you know what, since I'm actually, um, like, moving the month up and stuff, I can actually make a pretty rough estimate as to, uh, how many attempts I made. 
to get this thing. And whether or not I was above or over odds. Like, besides the fact that, you know, it's about a 10% chance, so if, I, if it takes more than 10 5-star Tarantrum, then you've had bad luck. But also just comparing, like, you know, the odds of including the fact that you can get 3 and 4 stars, and including the fact that the 5-stars aren't always Tarantrum, I can kind of probably figure it out. I don't think I will. As I've said this, I've realized I don't feel like doing that math in my head. Actually, it might not be too bad to do it. Let me see if I can make my brain work. I can do it during this section where there's, like, some time spent waiting. I really wonder if there will be, uh, raids or, like, Dynamax Adventures or something in the, uh, the new games. Um... I guess it would be a 1 in 150 chance of getting the shiny on any given reset of this. Is that really right? Yeah, because there's a 1 in 3 chance of it being 5 star, and then the 5 star has a 2% chance, so that'd be a 1 in 50. So yeah, I guess 1 in 150. I guess it's not, it's not too bad at all. Although simultaneously I say that, but the date's going to be in, like, October if it takes that long. Uh, one day I'm going to go through and, uh, clean up all my, uh, templates and stuff for alerts and whatnot. I probably should have done that, honestly, last night. Oh, uh, yeah, last night I, uh, ended up working a lot later than I expected. And so I just, uh, seeing that reminds me I need to look up when 420 is, so that way I can request the day off of work. Not for the reason you're thinking, by the way. I mean that so that way I don't have to deal with all the people who are high off their ass at work. Or like, who, you know, customers coming in, shit like that. Working 420 is not a fun day. There's way too many stupid people. Um... Got what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, Alright, I was about uh, having to work late yesterday. So yeah, I just I was at work a lot longer than I expected. And so, by the time I got done with that and everything, it was late enough. I was like, eh, I don't feel like streaming. Granted, I think I got off around the same time tonight. But I actually like expected that. And also, with this event dropping tonight... I figured it was a good time for a short stream. I could have done, like, uh, Organization and Chill yesterday or something like that. Wild Area event. Yeah, so there's an event. Uh, I will show you in a second. Oh, perfect. I actually have to save real quick. Uh, yeah, so there's an event going on. So if you go to the Mystery Gift and you go to Get Wild Area News, whatever, like, the current, like wild area event thing going on um it basically it changes what um what the special or some of the special dens are in um in the wild area which um you can look up on Serbi, it'll tell you i don't mean that. did i actually save there i don't think i did let me double check uh but yeah Serbi will like tell you Kind of whenever there's an event and stuff like that. But yeah, this one specifically, um, it's for all of the Gen 5 and Gen 6 fossil Pokemon. Uh, but specifically, Tarantrum has a significantly higher shiny rate as part of this event. Speaking of, hey, what do you know? What's that blue dino?
But yeah, if you're paying attention to the, uh, basically... Hey, thanks for the follow, man. So yeah, um, so basically I was looking for five-star tarantrums. And then in those, there is a two in 25 chance. So about a 10, about like a 7 to 10% chance that it would be shiny. Alright, uh... Also, you ignore the name of this, uh, Excalibur, or Excavalier, whatever the fuck the name of it is. This thing's just some nonsense that I got in a mystery trade. That is almost certainly hacked, but, like, I don't care. Like, I would never use this thing in, like, online or anything like that. But, uh, just, like, using it for shit like this, where, like, I could build something to Oko this pretty easily, so, like, it just saves me the time of actually doing that. And this... Any, like, of the hacked bullshit that I've received through random trades, all that stuff's gonna die in the save. Remember the whole drama of Machamps.com Pokemon? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's annoying that companies are trying to sell hacked Pokemon and they advertise through the mystery trades. Don't get me wrong, fuck machamps.com. Um, but, like, I don't care. Like, I don't care about people hacking for shit or whatever, just don't use it online. And, like, don't try to say that it's legit, you know? But, like, if it's just for, like, your own playthrough, I don't give a shit. Fucking give yourself a shiny Arceus with maxed out stats. Hella scummy, but at least it can, it can be useful. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, like, there's been other free options for that stuff, too, you know? Like Oaks Lab, uh, or, uh, Vibe Trade Labs, or whatever it's called on Twitch now. Like, there's Twitch channels where you can get hacked Pokemon, and I've done it. Specifically for the, um, the currently un unobtainable mythical Pokemon. True, and you can do it yourself easily. Yeah, it's just like... It's just annoying that they're like trying to sell Pokemon. Was it holding a Master Ball? Oh, it almost certainly was. I think I have, like, 30 Master Balls in this game. Just because of stuff like that, where you get trait hack nonsense and it has a Master Ball on it. It's like, well, guess we can use that. Collect hacked Pokemon just for the free Master Balls. Yeah, it's pretty useful for that. And, like, yeah, when I was, uh... When I was getting the not obtainable uh, mythic Pokemon, those I always like put a Master Ball on just so that way I could get another one. Oh, 95 out of work. I think any hit should knock it out anyways. Yep, there we go. Plus you can transfer those Master Balls to other games. Uh, can you? I guess if you have like multiple... Or if you have someone to trade with, they'll trade it back to you or whatever. Oh, hey, I only have 20 Master Balls. Uh, I might actually use a Beast Ball on this thing. I can't believe I'm saying that, but... I think Beast Ball will actually look pretty good on this thing. Yeah, especially with, like, the... The points on his head. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Pokemon holding them during transfer, yes. Gotcha. Yeah, I know hold items during trades. Because, like, you know, that's for a lot of trade evolutions. You have to do that. But yeah, if you try and send them to Pokemon Home, it'll just return the item to the inventory. Which sucks. Oh, nice. Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah. I'm not 100% sure why they do that. Um, but yeah. 
All right, let's go ahead and save right off the bat. It's really annoying for stuff like the items for uh, Zacian and Zamazenta, because it's like you can't get the sword and shield, and you can't get the shield and sword. Oh, wow, this thing, this thing has potentially perfect stats. Yeah, because like... I assume Tarantrum is going to be a... Oh, it doesn't have good nature, though, but that's fine. That's easy to fix. But yeah, I assume Tarantrum's a physical attacker. If it has strong draw, it's 100% a physical attacker. Uh, so special attack doesn't matter. So yeah, that's basically perfect stats, too. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, that was pretty... That was pretty quick and easy. I think that was, like, my third Tarantrum that I encountered, and I got it. Alright. Probably so you can't break the game with 70 Master Balls on Route 1 from like 2005 on. Fair enough. Yeah, God knows you could really have messed with some stuff with the, uh, the duping glitches in uh, the Gen 4 remakes. Let me gonna save again just to be sure. I know I saved, but I'm always paranoid about that. I suppose this wouldn't be the worst shiny to lose that way, though, because I could easily get another. Alright, let's move it over. And then... Safety saves are hella important. Yeah, my thing is I always, I'm just always paranoid that I didn't actually save. Because like as soon as I I hit the save button, the fact that I just hit the save button, that it just immediately is cleared from my brain. All right. Oh yeah, I don't know if I showed these off last time I streamed, but if I didn't, uh, over the last weekend there was an event for in Pokemon Go for Sandshrew, both the normal and the Alolan version. So here we got Shiny Sandshrew, Shiny Sand Slash, and then Normal Sandshrew and Normal, or Shiny Normal Sandshrew and Shiny Normal Sand Slash. So that was awesome. And then also there was the, there was the uh, Galarian, uh, Shiny Galarian Zapdos from the, uh, online competition last weekend as well so next month i can get that uh that moltres and then i'll have the three shiny uh galarian birds he just hunted sand true and sword oh that sucks yeah i'd actually been um thinking about making um sand true my next egg hunt and i'm really glad i didn't do that now uh let's see there it is, yep. Level 69, nice. Alright, well, that's awesome. Cool. It's another shiny down. Go ahead and save real quick. Uh, I guess I can work on some Registeel then. I wasn't expecting it to only take me like 30 minutes tonight. All right. Uh, I need to pull up the counter program. Switch us over to... Yeah, that's the one I want. Okay. Uh, like a Pokemon has models for shinies? Yes, that is very helpful. To like be able to just look at a glance to see that something's shiny.
All right, time is updated. Uh, right, I have to actually like adjust this uh, thing a little bit. Unless it's Garchomp or Drapion, yeah. Yeah, or Gengar, or yeah, there's a lot of knock reach shinies. All right, uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. So I'll try to get up to around uh, 3350 today. Still haven't fucking swapped out this goddamn shiny for uh, something that isn't shiny. Anything that isn't shiny. Oh. Uh, one day I'll learn my lesson. I've already lost so much time because of this damn thing. I think it's something like two hours that that little shiny animation has cost me. Green shinies can be either really good or really bad. Yep. Yeah. I mean, like, Sandshrew is a great example of a uh, bad green shiny. It just doesn't look good. But then there's, like, Espeon or um, Machamp. Machamp? Eh. Machamp is one of the ones that I'm not big on. But... Yeah, I know. So the, the greens are definitely hit or miss. Espeon is awful. Oh, really? I like it because it makes it look like a freaking alien. Yeah, like Stantler is a terrible green shiny. Stantler and Weirdeer, actually. Weirdeer is even worse, actually, shiny, I feel like, just because, like... It doesn't have the excuse of it just being run through a program to make it shiny. Or to make the shiny sprite. Because some of the older gens, they didn't like hand make the uh, the shiny colors. They just ran it through. Sandshrew. Yeah, Sandshrew has a pretty good shiny. Or sorry, Sand Slash has a pretty good shiny. Not big on a uh, sand true though. And then both of the Alolan versions are okay. Might be your bias. I take it you're a sand true fan then. I like Shining a Champ because it looks like the Hulk. Okay, I can get. I can see that. Have a gerbil that. <clears throat> oh God! I don't know what the hell happened to my voice there. You have a gerbil that looks exactly like Sandshrew. That would do it. Yeah, Sandshrew's not bad. It's pretty cute. It's certainly not the worst of the Gen 1 Pokemon. Sans yeah, Science Slash has a really good shiny. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Hold on. Second.
Okay. See, so yeah, I was, uh... When I do these wretched steel hunts, I actually have a, uh... Kind of like two different counting systems going on. So I have, like, the main one that's on stream. But then also I have, a. Um, I have another one going on my laptop that increments in amounts of nine. So that way, every time I do a reset, I know where my next set should finish. So that way, if I forget to hit the button for one of them or something, I can always, like, double check with that to make sure I'm still on track. Since I'm actually doing knockouts on this instead of uh, just running away like some people do. Which I think is slightly faster, but this way helps me keep track a little bit better. So this way I burn through all my uh, close combats and then reset. But yeah, the red spikes on the uh, on the gold with Sandshrew is pretty damn good. Kill method increases shiny rate? No, it does not. Um, so, well, one, I'm resetting anyway, so it doesn't actually help to do that. So, like, after I use up all my close combats, I will close the game, and then I'll uh, come back in. But even in general, the, um, the doing 500 encounters to get boosted shiny odds works a little weird and it doesn't work at all on uh registeel in fact registeel all the reggies are unaffected by the shiny charm i'm gonna switch to different pokemon now i have to i have to transfer my gal actually oh yeah i needed that's why i didn't do it earlier that's right because i had it on my battle team for um for the online competition because i was just kind of fucking around with it um but yeah, I need to bring over my Gallade from my other profile onto this one. So I have to go into home and do a whole bunch of shit with that. That's why I haven't, like, quickly... Or that's why I haven't done it at all, because it just it isn't super quick to do. It would only take a couple minutes, but... Eh. But yeah, the way that the uh, 500 encounters works... Is it, um, it increases the chance of getting one of the Pokemon with the aura on it. Not shiny, but like the like yellow glow that's on, po on Pokemon, uh, in the wild. Sometimes it boosts the odds of that, and then also it boosts the odds of those specific Pokemon having a better shiny rate. Yeah, with all the Regis, Registeel, Ice, um, Rock, Aleki, and uh, Drago, they, um, there's something weird with how they're, um, they're generated, and the generation of them for their stats and stuff just doesn't take into account the Shiny Charm. So, like, normally if I had the Shiny Charm, my odds would be, uh, 1366. Or sorry, I should rephrase how I said that. Normally, because I have the shiny charm, your odds are 1 in 1366. Um, but because of how these are generated, it's just the base rate of 1 in 4096, I think. That might have been on purpose. I don't know. I don't know. Because they... It's not just the Reggies. Um, for instance, the... Um, the kind of set spawns for the um, Impidimp in the uh, Balanlea Forest and the base game, those also have the same weird uh, number generation for them, or RNG or whatever. And so those also aren't affected by the Shiny Charm. To be clear, if you like breed the Impidimp with a Shiny Charm, then you, you're getting the boost there. 
Um, and just like normal encounters, you're fine. But like the specific, like you interact with a mushroom and you get attacked by an impidimp, those don't have the normal mechanic, or they don't—they aren't affected by the shiny charm like they normally would be. So yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's also weird that it seems to be intentional that the shiny charm doesn't affect wild Pokemon, any wild Pokemon, in um in BDSP. So most set encounters have the issue. Not most, actually. So for instance, uh Cobalion, Verezion, and Terrakion in this DLC, the Crown Tundra, you encounter them. And pretty much set encounters, and they are affected by the shiny charm, as far as I know. So yeah, it's weird. And then you also have Keldeo, which is shiny locked, so you can't even get it shiny at all, which is annoying. But that see, that one is intentional, because Keldeo has never been av uh, available as a shiny. It's stupid, but it makes it makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. It's. It's a weird issue with the Reggies. And for a while, um, a lot of people thought they were affected. So interaction encounters is the problem. I guess. I don't know. Again, it's a, it's a weird thing. I really do hope, and I don't think they will, but I really hope Game Freak learns anything from BDSP and understands that shiny locking is really stupid and no one likes it and they need to stop doing it. Like, I understand it for, like, the brand new legendaries, but that's it. That Those need to be the only things. And even that's stupid, but it's like, I get it. They want to They want to hold them back for an event or something, but... Because it's so nice that in a BDSP, basically everything, or basically nothing, rather, sorry, basically nothing is shiny locked. It's pretty much, it's only the, uh, the Mew and the Jirachi that you get in, a uh, and the Flower Town, I forget the name of it off the top of my head. But those are the only things that are shiny locked. Like the uh, the shaman that you can get from the event right now, on uh, for another like ten days I think, and then uh, the Arceus that was just made available, and then the um, we assume that uh, Darkrai when that comes as well, you can shiny hunt all of those. It's full odds; they're one in four thousand, but you can't do it. Be cool if Reggie Alecky and Reggie Drago were in BDSP. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's annoying that they're not. I understand them not doing the full, like, all 900 Pokemon, because it is supposed to be a Gen 4 game. But some natural additions, like the new Regis or Sylveon, or stuff that, you know, just, like, makes sense to include, I guess, would be really nice to see those in it, but... I don't know. That's not the way they went with it. I'm just happy that every Gen 1 through 4 Pokemon is in the... is in uh, BDSP. Sure, it wouldn't be a true remake if they had added them. I mean, that's the thing. It's not a true remake anyways, because, like, you have stuff like the EXP share always on, and... Just, like, stuff like that. Or, like, the, you know, the expanded underground and stuff like that. But it is, um... I don't know. Like, I get... I get it. At least they were consistent about it. But, like... 
yeah, I would have liked to see the new Reggies and like Sylveon and stuff like that in BDSP for sure. Mandatory, mandatory EXP share is true bullshit. I don't mind that XP share being always on. Um, especially in like this game or Arceus or we can probably assume that, um, what is it, the next, uh, the Gen 9 games are going to have that as well. But at least those games were like originally created with that mechanic in mind. It's very stupid that it's in a BDSP. And yeah, you should be able to turn it off, but like, I don't know. As long as like the games are being made with that in mind, I don't really mind it. Yeah, unfortunately, I think uh, always on XP share is just a permanent fixture from now on. Wish there was an option not to have it. Yeah, that's just like, just make it an option in the menu. Just be like, do you want shared XP? Yes or no? But yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, Because what are we on? Like, let's go Pikachu and Eevee at it. But that was a very different game, but it did have that. Uh, I think earlier games had it too. But I know, like, every Switch game has had it, and you haven't been able to turn it off. So it's like, well, I don't think they're going to back down on that one. I was just happy that fucking Legends of Arceus wasn't two different games. Like, even new, the new Gen 9 is going to be Scarlet and Violet, and it's like... God, why? Why are we still doing multiple games? It's so nice that in Legends Arceus you can just find everything in the game and you don't have to be doing a bunch of bullshit and like trading around and stuff like that. The only things that aren't like necessarily in the game without like something outside affecting it are uh, the Shaman and the Darkrai in Legends of Arceus, and that's just because you need a save file from Sword and Shield and BDSP. Like, if you only want to level up one Pokemon, you have to remove all your Pokemon from the party, except for, yeah. Like, you should be able to turn it off. I definitely agree with that. Even as someone who doesn't... doesn't mind that, because it makes the games really easy. But yeah, you should be able to turn it off. Man, that was the worst thing about BDSP, I feel like, was it was uh, kind of ruins hardcore Nuzlocke. I mean, you're not wrong, but also complaining that it ruins a completely outside the game, like, challenge is kind of, I don't know, it's like, I would never expect them to make design decisions to accommodate for Nuzlocke and stuff. Though, it would be cool if they would add, and this this will never fucking happen, but it'd be cool if they would add like, okay, hey, you beat the game, now you can, you know, do, you know, you can start a new save file to do a randomized playthrough or a Nuzlocke or something like that. That'll never happen, because it's Game Freak and the Pokemon Company, but it would be cool. It's a niche of a niche group. Yeah, I mean... Like, 
it would be stupid if they specifically made a mechanic that would, like, go out of its way to prevent you from doing a Nuzlocke. That would be annoying, but, like, the fact that, like, if Nuzlocke's or randomized playthroughs or stuff like that kind of get hurt as collateral of other mechanic changes that weren't meant to, like, it's like that, I don't mind. Another thing would be nice if it was difficulty setting. No, it'd be nice is if we get a difficulty setting that doesn't require you to trade with another fucking player to get both difficulty settings. Boy, did they make some stupid decisions with the Gen 5 games. God, that was so dumb. And stupid because knowing Game Freak, they're just like, Oh, people hated Gen 5, so we can't ever go back and do that again. It's like, no, we hated how you guys did that in Gen 5. Just let me start it as hard mode or easy mode or whatever from the beginning. And don't make a fucking difficulty setting of version exclusive. Because it was like, White 2 had easy mode and Black 2 had hard mode. And you had to go and trade with the other fucking version in order to get both of the difficulty modes. It's like... What the hell is going on here, guys? Like... But yeah, there were so many... There were so many really cool ideas and decisions made with Gen 5, but there were so many stupid ones. Or like, making some Pokemon just an absolute nightmare to evolve. Like, what is it, Volcarona, that you have to get to like level 70 before it evolves? And she's like, why? Yeah, it is a shame because, for the most part, Gen 5 games are by far the best that the uh, the two game, 2D games ever looked. Which shouldn't be surprising, it was also the last of the 2D games. For the most part, there were some sections that had some like pseudo 3D bullshit going on, but that was... that was bad. Yamasta Runarigas. Uh, yes... But mostly just because it's so specific. Like, you can still do that in your own game. Like, I would I still prefer uh Runa Re or how are you supposed to say that? I still prefer that Yamask evolution to a trade evolution or something like that. But yeah, the like weird hyper specific ones are kinda getting stupid too. Like, who the fuck is accidentally going to do that? Yeah. That, that or the um, the thing for Basque Legion in Legends Arceus, which, like, you have to... You have to take an absurd amount of recoil damage. And she's like, why? What are we doing? Can we just not do that? Please? Again, still better than a trade evolution, but trade evolutions are just the worst shit ever. Especially because, for some reason, they forgot to, like, make them work with, um, with Pokemon Home. So if you trade over Pokemon Home, your Pokemon don't evolve, which is just like, what the fuck, guys? Like, I kind of get it, because it's not actually a game, but also, like, come on. Trade evolution should become level up stone or area evolutions. Yeah, they really do need to. Um... I do like that Legends Arceus they added the link cable item. So for the trade evolutions that were just um it was just trade them, like for Gengar or Golem and stuff like that. You can just use the item and get them in the same game without trading at all. And I really, really hope that comes back. And then stuff like Rhyferior, where it's a trade evolution with a specific item. You just use the item on it, and it evolves. Stuff like that. I really, I, God, I really hope they do that with uh, Gen 9. They just, like, take that item from Legends Arceus. Love how they reuse the classic, the IRL thing. Yeah, yeah, the fact that it's a link cable is really cool. 
that was that was a really smart choice by them. But yeah, being that Legends Arceus was made by um by Game Freak, man, I really hope they like don't abandon that. But also, it's Game Freak, so there's a very good chance that they will, because that's what they do. They have good ideas and then abandon them to the next generation. Like, there's a good chance that um, we won't have raids or anything in the next games either. Not because there's... Well, the raids weren't perfect. Dynamax Max Adventures weren't perfect. But, like, the fact that... Yeah, it's just dumb. Like, there's... Like, Game Freak is so bad about carrying over their good ideas from previous games. Or Trade Evolution should have NPC options too. That'd be nice, but I... That's... That feels more like a uh, stopgap solution for something that really needs like a proper fix, you know. I think using the item for it is cool. I feel like making an NPC is a little annoying. Also, I mean, we're talking about the same company that had Mindy in uh, in Gen Four and in the Gen Four remake, so like, you know, I don't exactly trust them to not troll you with those trades. Fuck it, that goddamn haunter with a fucking Everstone on it. God damn it. What a bitch. That's like, that's probably one of the cruelest things that Game Freak's ever done is that fucking trade. God damn it. It is kind of funny, but it's, it, it's so fucking annoying. Especially, like, nowadays, right? Like, with the internet, you have some warning about it, but, like, if you were a kid playing the Gen 4 games, and you, there's this chick who's like, yeah, I'm gonna trade you a Haunter. And you've heard before that if you receive a Haunter in a trade, it turns into a Gengar, and like, oh my god, I have to go get that Pokemon so I can go trade her, and oh my god. And then she trades it to you and has a goddamn Everstone on it. Like, who hurt that developer at Game Freak? That they just, like, needed to punish everyone for that. With that, rather. Again, kind of hilarious. But also, very off. Just like, just like, what the fuck? So, that, that developer woke up that day and they just straight up chose violence. Yeah, I I suspect the 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 cable's gonna stick around. I think that's gonna be a thing moving forward. Um I'm a little worried about raids. But we'll see. Again, the raids also weren't perfect in these games. They were a good idea, they just needed to be worked on a bit more. And specifically they need AI that isn't completely useless. Especially in Dynamax Adventures. Oh my god. Ultra Wormhole was removed for Let's Go. Uh, yes, but also... Let's Go is a very weird game. was a very weird game. Ghost Stop was removed for Sword and Shield. What do you mean by Ghost Stop? Raids removed for Arceus. Again, Arceus is a spin-off, though. That isn't that surprising. Like, Let's Go and Arceus losing features isn't that weird. Because they're very different games. I mean, both neither of them really plays at all like a traditional Pokemon game. And like with the Ultra Wormholes, that was kind of like a, you know, specific to the lore of Gen 7.
Right, it's probably a one-time gimmick. God, I hope not. Like, I'm fine with a, um... Raid Sorcerer. Uh, I don't know. I feel like... Like, Dynamaxing and stuff is definitely like a specific gimmick to the Galar region, right? But I feel like raids are like their own kind of thing. Like, yeah, they're part of the wild area and whatnot. And we'll see what... If there is a wild area with a new game, because the whole game is supposed to be open world. But I don't know. Like, I don't... To be clear, I don't expect raids to behave exactly the same as they are in this game. And I wouldn't be surprised if Dynamax Adventures don't come back. But, like, the raids are such a good idea. In terms of, like, having a co-op mode and... Just having replayability in the post-game and stuff like that. I don't think they'll be exactly the same, but I... I do really hope they come back in some form. But yeah, I mean, I guess we'll have to see. It'll probably have a different function. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. Guess we'll see. I mean, we don't really know much of anything about the new games yet. Like, the biggest thing that we know about the new games is that they've specifically said right off the bat that it's an open-world experience. Which is a big thing for them to have said, because nowhere in any marketing or any, like, discussion from Game Freak about Legends Arceus did they ever call that game open-world. So the fact that right off the bat they're calling uh, Scarlet and Violet open-world games is, like... Very interesting. Come on. Oh my god. There is. Yeah, Zack Attack, I don't even know what you want to be said to that, buddy. That is so out of nowhere. I had nothing to do with what anyone was talking about, so... But hey, thanks for commenting on the channel. Oh, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, there was always some little leaks and stuff. But yeah, we'll... S I don't know. We don't have anything really official yet about the new games. Other than, like, a handful of Pokemon that have been confirmed because of the trailer. Like, we do know that, um... At least, uh, Hisuian forms will return. And stuff like that. Because, like, we've already seen Hisuian, uh, Zoroark... Which is pretty neat. So like we, you know, there's like some extrapolation you make, but yeah, but there's not a whole lot now. Hopes for the grass cat stays in all fours. Oh boy, don't we all? Why you don't want grass type Incineroar? Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully the final evolutions for the starters aren't stupid. You like Incineroar, but please not again. Yeah. It's, uh... I, I, 
don't know. I just, we don't need any more bipedal, uh, poke, more any, any more bipedal, really any bipedal Pokemon at this point, but specifically the starters, especially when you have, like, you know, the Incineroar and the new cat and whatnot. What's up, Vivi in the flower? Welcome to the stream. Incineroar boy. Uh well unfortunately that isn't limited to just the uh just the two legged Pokemon, buddy. Speaking of, did you know that Vaporeon can We're not going there. That fucking cursed ass copy pasta. Comp pleading for Tarantrum. Oh, nice. Yeah, I just got my um my shiny Tarantrum because of the uh, event in the wild area right now. So, which actually that would be a pretty good way to get a uh, high stat one, anyways. Uh, Vivian, this actually goes back to the, uh, shiny Tarantrum that I got. Uh, I assume Tarantrum is a physical attacker. Because if it is, then the one that I got is actually, like, perfect IVs. You have two from Dens, nice. In a version that copy pasta with the blue Pikmin. God, why? Well, I guess that copy pasta is a meme at this point, so I guess that would be why, but still think so still learning yeah i mean i assume so because it's a tyrannosaurus rex so i feel like it would make sense that it's a physical attacker almost not worth it to hunt the encounters because of raids and masuda yeah i mean there's i mean yeah for some pokemon like you can't breed them Oh, so I do think uh, a lot of Pokemon, honestly, encounters can be faster, but the problem is it's like you're dealing with the uh, the aura Pokemon and how that affects uh, shiny rates and stuff, so that's like, it's kind of a fucking mess to do it. But yeah, for the most part, raids and Masuda method are going to usually be the best way to get shinies. This is the first time doing comps or learning. It's definitely a process. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love... I love, like, building Pokemon for, like, comp and stuff. Or, like, I love the idea of it. Um, But I'm not any good at competitive. Which, granted, that's because I don't ever do it, but... But yeah, like, I never actually end up going online, so I don't ever really have a reason to, like, you know, build and breed and all that stuff. But, but yeah, I definitely enjoy that stuff, in theory, anyways. And yeah, there's a ton of little stuff to learn with it, too. You had to ask about your friend's Helioptile EVs. Yeah, a uh, good research or a good resource for that stuff is um, Smogon, or just like Pokemon uh, Showdown, just like in general. Uh, but yeah, Smogon's like a really good res resource for figuring out like good uh good setups. Although I guess Smogon's more aimed at um, aimed at single battles. Whereas VGC is going to be um, oh, whatchamacallit. Double battles. You couldn't get it to max out as you had your spread set up. Oh, okay, yeah. 
Yeah, that can be annoying sometimes. Especially because, like, there's wasted EVs where it's, like, they they don't add up enough to give you even a single more stat point. But, like, yeah, I don't know. EVs are something that I would... I wish they would go and just, like, clean that up just a little bit. But yeah, hope there's a fast way to get XP in the new games. I'm sure there will be. I mean... This game has the XP candies. Legends of RC has XP candies. You can just straight up buy those. And you're missing its special defense stats, and it's frustrating. It's four hours struggling. Yeah. Bring back XP candies. Yes. Yeah, at least, like, even if it's not something that's available at all during your playthrough, but, like, after you, like, beat the Elite Four, or whatever the equivalent will be in Gen 9, just, like, yeah, opening up stuff like that to make it easier. I wonder if they will ever, um... If they will ever introduce a, uh, like, plastic bottle cap, instead of, like, the normal bottle cap or the gold bottle cap, to, like make no good stats. Because there's a handful of situations where that is actually pretty useful. Either for Pokemon that you intentionally want slow, or your special attackers that you want to get rid of their physical attack. You'd love that, yeah. Yeah, that's, like, the biggest thing that they did really well with Sword and Shield was just, like, all of the little quality of life improvements. The ability capsule and ability patch and... Just stuff like that. Off the top of your head, Trick Room Dreadnought needs no good speed. Yeah, I mean, anything that's a, um... Anything that you want to work with Trick Room has to have no good speed. Or you want to have no good speed. But yeah, stuff like that. And then... Yeah, it's, I mean, it's mainly just... Um, speed and physical attack are the two that you care about with that. But yeah, it would be cool if they do that. Though... I don't know. The only reason why I would think that maybe they won't. It's just because at that point, with like a plastic bottle cap or something, it would, um... It would completely remove the need for breeding anymore. Right, because you have your nature-altering mints, you have your ability-altering items, you can max out your IVs, and also your EVs, also with other items as well, so it's just like... It is kind of the thing where it's like, it's really good for competitive, because you don't need to spend a whole bunch of time screwing around to, like, get the, you know, make the Pokemon how you want it. But also, like, breeding kind of vaporizes as a necessary mechanic. Although, I say that, most of the changes they made with this game, with mints and stuff like that, have already kind of done that, so I think they'd I think they're fine with breeding just being a thing that you do for, uh, for shinies, and, like, maybe if you kind of care about stats and stuff. All right, we got a couple more here. Or make the worst possible Pokemon in existence with six plastic bottle caps. Yeah. I actually, um... I don't remember what it is, but I got in a, uh... In a wonder trade on Pokemon Home, I got a, uh... A Pokemon that had six no-good IVs. I was just like, wow. So that thing immediately got, like... Put into a safe space so I can't trade it away. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm only going to do a couple more encounters here tonight, guys. Because I started super late tonight. And I don't want to go, like, really, really late. I just wanted to uh, take up a little bit more time after I got my tarantrum. Wonder how rare that is. Um, I mean, it would be the same rarity as getting a Pokemon with all, um, without bottle caps, mind you. It'd be the same as getting a Pokemon with all, uh, best IVs. So, like, 32 to the 6th power or some shit like that. Uh, not very common, for sure. Actually, you know what? Let me take that back. It would be a lot rarer than that. Because a lot of Pokemon, a lot of times, Pokemon will be guaranteed, like, 3 IVs or something like that. But that doesn't take into account, um, no good. So, yeah. So, yeah, actually, it would be a lot more rare. Interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to wrap up there for tonight. Just a few Registeel attempts. Still didn't get it, but that's fine because I got my blue Tarantrum. I finally had a use for a Beast Ball. I feel like there might have been something else recently that I used a beast ball on, actually. But. Mew joined your max raid? Huh? Like, someone is using a Mew online? Or how do you mean? Because it's definitely not possible for it to pop up as, like, an AI Pokemon. Or an enemy, like, the raid Pokemon. And I, it is, uh, you can import Mew into Sword and Shield. There's just no way to get it in the game. Came out from under the truck to become a train on themselves. Ah, okay. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to wrap up there. Uh, probably, I'm trying to think. I might, I should stream tomorrow night. Yeah, I should be able to stream tomorrow night. I think the next time I don't stream will probably be maybe Tuesday. But I also said this last week, and I didn't stream it all on the weekend, so I'll see. But I'll probably be doing uh, just more, some more Legends Arceus tomorrow. I'm still working on catching all the Pokemon in the Pokedex, so that way I can get my Arceus in Legends Arceus. And then, because of the update a day or two ago to uh, Brilliant Diamond... You can actually get Arceus in the Gen 4 remakes now, as long as you have completed all of the main quests in Legends Arceus. Uh, and that Arceus is Shining Huntable in PL or uh, in BDSB. Uh, but yeah, anyways, thank you guys for watching. I definitely appreciate it, and I'll see y'all next time.